Here is a punch biopsy, probably from the trunk because of the thick reticular dermis. And uh, the epidermis looks, uh, maybe has a little bit of hyperkeratosis, uh, but not much, in, maybe tiny spongiosis, but relatively little change. The main findings in the dermis, you can see even from this power that there's superficial and deep perivascular infiltrate of inflammatory cells, probably lymphocytes, okay? So perivascular lymphocytic infiltrate involving the superficial vessels and focally even the deep uh, vessels here, okay? Interestingly, there's also a naked hair shaft, a distorted pigmented hair shaft here that's not in the middle of a hair follicle, but has been has fallen out of a follicle or been kind of uh, ruptured out of a follicle and surrounded by some fibrosis and histiocytes. Uh, in this case, probably that's just an incidental finding. Maybe there was an incidental ruptured folliculitis here or, uh, or something else. But I don't think that's associated, but just in case you notice that that's what that is, just an incidental uh, naked hair shaft. Uh, in this case, not related to the diagnosis. So here we have superficial and deep perivascular lymphocytic infiltrate. If it comes into focus, maybe on this piece, you can see that they're lymphocytes. The epidermis shows no significant change, really. Uh, no good interface alteration, very minimal, if any, spongiosis. It's basically normal epidermis. And then, it's hard to appreciate here because of what we've talked about, but there is some subtle increase in dermal mucin. There's a little extra space between the collagen, and if you were to do a colloidal iron stain, it would probably light up and show that this bluish kind of granular stuff that's very hard to see on this scan, there's kind of blue smudgy stuff between the reticular collagen bundles, that is interstitial mucin or mixoid material, hyaluronic acid, ground substance, whatever you like to call it in there. So superficial and deep perivascular lymphocytes with increased interstitial mucin in the reticular dermis is a classic finding that we will see in lupus erythematosus. And in a case like this, where it looks like lupus but doesn't have the epidermal interface alteration, we would call this tumid lupus erythematosus. And tumid lupus uh, is often a, a plaque, a kind of indurated erythematous plaque or or nodule, or sometimes multiple nodules or plaques, often on the chest or trunk of adults, more common in middle-aged or younger adult women. Um, and it is not usually associated with systemic uh, lupus. So some people have argued that it's, even though we call it lupus, because it has the dermal changes that are similar to those seen in other forms of lupus, because it's usually not associated with lupus, a systemic lupus, maybe it's actually not really lupus after all in some other process. Some people have argued that maybe it's related to uh, erythema annularis centrificum or other types of uh, skin disease or Gessner's lymphocytic infiltrate, which is a terminology that I personally don't use. I, I think of it as being on a spectrum with tumor lupus, but uh, these are the things that people can have argued about in the literature for years and you can read up on and see what you think. But perivascular, superficial and deep with some increased mucin and no interface alteration uh, in the right clinical setting would fit for tumid lupus, okay? And um, uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? And there are a variety of other things that have superficial and deep perivascular lymphocytic infiltrate like syphilis and uh, polymorphous light eruption, drug reactions, arthropopite reactions, etc. And you can go and watch uh, my other video about inflammatory dermatopathology 101, which talks about some of those inflammatory patterns. So that's tumid lupus in this case. Um, but uh, lupus, especially tumid lupus, often does have quite a bit of interstitial dermal mucin. Uh, but that by itself is not a specific finding. You can see mucin in other things aside from lupus. And also I've seen uh, cases of lupus that lack uh, or have very minimal interstitial mucin. So it's not, it's not a specific finding, but, it's, but it is a classically taught as being present. And I would say that in tumid lupus, it usually is present. It's usually abundant. But it's kind of hard to see, especially on a slide like this.